So I watched him live. Our whole group watched him live um, at different points during the season. He started off the season a little bit slow with with the uh, with the ignite, but his last half of the season, we really liked him. We liked uh, the defensive piece, just the versatility. Um, he takes a great deal of pride in defending. That's just the first thing he really focuses on: stepping on the court between the lines. Um, and that was reiterated in his visit here. That that's the one thing he really focuses on and takes pride in when he steps on the court. And just seeing the floor, passing the ball, um, touch around the basket. I just think he has an, just a kind of innate feel for the game on both ends of the floor. Um, just really wants to win and make others better. And I think that was really attractive. And I think it was a great fit for our team where we're at right now. Yeah, I mean, we didn't think EJ was going to be there 41 at all. So for us, that was a huge get. Um, look, we didn't get him in on a workout just because his uh, his group didn't feel he was going to be there. Obviously, we weren't going to draft him at 8, but didn't feel he was going to be there 41, so we didn't get to see him. But we saw his pro day. Um, we watched him a lot during the season. He had a great season on both ends of the floor. He was the leader of that Ohio State team. Um, like you said, on the, vers the defensive versatility standpoint, just – I mean, his ability to time, I mean, 2.5 blocks per game at his size is amazing. Um, physical player, switches out, and he's just a high-level competitor and a high-level kid. So, young man, I'm sorry. So, I th you know, high, both high-level young men coming in here, and he just they just fit our culture and what we're trying to do and what Willie Green has built here So and continues to build. So, they're going to fit in seamlessly, and I'm excited. To, we're all excited to get them both in. We had a couple guys um, in that the, the guys that we liked went earlier. We had a couple guys that we liked went after, but Dyson was the guy. Um, and, yeah, there was – it was a little nervous in the room during seven because we know Portland liked him as well. Uh, we had some intel that Portland liked Dyson and they liked Shaden. So there was a chance that, you know, that they could have taken him at seven. So when they took Shaden, uh, the room exploded. So um, – he was our guy from the outset that I thought would fit very well, and we think at time can be a great fit here alongside the players that we have. Um, you know, obviously he's really young, but he's going to grow in and he's going to be a great player in this league. Same time. How, how, how far away do you guess that he is from being able to, you know, contribute in a real life? Um, you know, I I don't think it'll take that long in a real way, um, just because of the talent that we have and 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 the guys that can play the game on both ends of the floor, the experience, obviously, our guys now getting a chance to get the playoff feel last year. But he's going to be around some really good professionals and learn. And he is a worker, very mature kid beyond his years. Um, but the body's got to, he's got to grow into his body. He's got to figure out the NBA game. So, you know, I'm, I, I think with the way that we teach and the players he's playing with, we're hoping in the second half of this year and, and going, into, uh, going into his second year, he's going to be really playing meaningful minutes. Yeah, I think uh, I think shooting is an issue with a lot of these young players that come in the league. The, the line is going to be longer for everybody. So um, I think he brings so many more intangibles to the game that he's going to impact winning regardless if he's making shots or not. Um, but we feel we have one of the better shot doctors in the league with Fred Vincent. So uh, he's going to get in here and work. And he's a tireless worker. He loves the game of basketball and he's a high-level competitor. So... Um, it's going to translate. He's going to figure it out. But if it, even if it takes time, he, there's so many things he does on the court that's going to help us win. Uh, we're really not worried about that. Yeah, yeah, that was a big factor for us with Dyson. Um, you know, Herb takes on the brunt of a lot of defensive um, guys that we have to guard every night, night in and night out. And Dyson is a guy that can guard ones, twos, and threes as well. So. Um, you know, hopefully it won't just be her taking the brunt of those uh, matchups, um, you know, every night, every game, first, first and second, you know, lineups. But um, we're very excited with Dyson because that's what he wants. He wants the best guy every night. And that's what, when he played with Ignite, he had the best, the toughest matchup on the other side on the perimeter. So, um, 
yeah, we're really excited to have him in. I don't. We might have matched up. I can't. I can't say that I know him uh, or remember him. Um, but uh, I know. I do know he played at NC State. Uh, you know, I think the attractive thing for us, which is interesting about him, is we got a lot of Carolina connections, and obviously with Dyson uh, and his father, he grew up spending a lot of summers in North Carolina. He's got a lot of family there. So uh, another North Carolina connection with our team. Obviously, he's Australian and grew up there, but he spent a lot of time in North Carolina growing up. I think it is an important piece when we're looking at guys to bring into um, this environment, to this organization. They have to be high-character young men that work hard and they're competitive. Uh, and everybody that we drafted tonight, uh, all three young men are that. So uh, it is an important piece to go along with the talent. Uh, and the fit and the size and the skill level, but it, it is a very important piece. Yes. Makovic, yes. Is he somebody you envision staying in Europe? Will he come over the summer league? Just, I guess, where does he land? Yeah, we'll, we'll be talking with, with him and, and his. Uh, and his agent, but the plan is for him to to stay in Europe for a year or two. He's he will. Put, the plan is also for him to play summer league. So we'll get a look at him this summer. Um, high energy young man, um, big time athlete with the size, and we're hoping with a year or two um, playing over in Europe with some high level competition, he'll be ready to come back here and help us. Because your roster is so stacked, did you find some of the high profile guys not? really wanting to come here or some reluctance from them? And did Dyson have a different mentality towards that from some of the guys maybe? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I would say there's some reluctance with some players, um, but we didn't get a lot of that, honestly. A lot of the guys came in here and they competed. Um, but Dyson wanted to be here. This is a place where he really wanted, so that matched up with, with our desires as well, and I think it's a, a really good fit. Um, but he came in here, wanted to come in here again. Um, we were able to interview him. Um, all of our guys got eyes on him during the year a couple times, so we were really familiar with him. And, uh, again, I just think he's going to be a really good fit with, with who he is and where we're at as an organization. Is that, is that unusual, maybe a little bit, that a guy – look at that roster, see all the minutes coming back and Zion and still really want to be there? Probably, yes. Um, but uh, that's why we think he's a special young man, because he sees the opportunity. He, he wants to win. He wants to get better in his mindset. If, his, I'm a, if I'm around a really good group of guys with a lot of talent, I have no choice but to get better. He's that competitive, and I can fit, and I can be on the court with any group of guys, and that's how he thinks. And, you know, um, Willie has said, guys get on the court, they defend first, and then they get a chance to do everything else. Um, and that's how this kid thinks. So I, I just think he'll be a good fit, for, for, especially for that mindset. What do you think about Steve Flores? You know, that was, you know, college now, he's the G League, the Knight, there's the NBL program yeah. in Australia. Sure. What do you think of guys who are choosing this, this G League Ignite program, and how does that, how does your organizations change, or what do you think of how, how that program has been kind of run so far? I think the program has been run great. Obviously, have it by Rod Strickland and uh, Sharif Abdul Rahim. Um, Jason Hart, I thought, did a great job. Brian Shaw did a great job last year. Um, I think, if anything, it helps those young those young players adapt and translate quicker. The floor is the same. A lot of the travel is the same. The rules are the same. So their their adaptation to the game at, in the NBA level is going to be quicker. Uh, now, does that mean it's going to be they're going to be more successful? I don't know. Time will tell. But I think it's a great um, process for them to to, to prepare uh, for the NBA. You guys are uh, coming up on a year with the Blue Green coach. What's that partnership been like for him? What's it been working for him with the you know, Pearl's here now? Uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, we're so lucky to have Willie Green as our head coach. I mean, he's a great partner, um, great leader. Uh, he was in there with us tonight. Um, wants to be a part, wants to know who these guys are, wants to understand the decisions we're making. Um, 
I mean, we trust his input and want his input with the guys that we're putting on the roster that he can coach. I think that's incredibly important to understand. Um, are these the guys that you want to go with the, the group that you have? Um, so uh, I think he's really excited about the guys that we added tonight, as, as all, all the rest of the group is. How soon do you expect everybody to be in to get ready for summer league? And have you had like a multi-year plan, development plan conversation with Dyson Daniels since he wanted to come to a team with all these men? It's already a lot of We've had a little bit of discussion with he and his group, but I think he understands. He's a worker. He understands that he asked some really good questions when he was here for his workout. We kind of outlined, um, you know, you're going to be here a little bit. If you're not playing on the roster, you're going to be in Birmingham. We need to get you stronger as well with me, which means you're going to be here working with us, with our performance team. But this guy's a competitor, man. Like, he's going to go out and he's not going to try to be like, oh, I'm just going to fit in and – you know, we'll see what happens. He's coming here to take minutes and get on the court. So, um, and that's how Willie is, though. He's not going to give minutes either, right? Yeah, I don't care if you're the eighth pick. You're going to have to earn minutes. Uh, to that, uh, was the process the same intensity for every prospect you brought in, or did some get more of an in-depth look, say, like Isaac Daniels and others that you thought might not be there at the eighth pick? I mean, some guys come in. I think the, the whole draft process is interesting because some – a lot of it is agent-driven through the process. Some guys want their guys to come in and compete, and they're okay with that. And some guys want them to come in and have one-on-one -on -one workouts. And some guys we have to fly to different places and watch them. Some guys we get medicals for. Some guys we don't get medicals for. So it's a, it's a very interesting process trying to gather as much information um, through the process to make the right decisions on the, on the, on the players that are available. So um, Dyson was not one of those guys that was hiding. I'll tell you that. He wanted to come compete. He wanted to come compete twice. Um, so, um, again, I think that goes into the fact that he really wanted to be here as well. So, um, there will be a development plan laid out for him, and he is going to be ready to come in here and do whatever we ask of him. That's for sure. Well, we uh, talked to him earlier. He mentioned uh, he enjoys kind of talking a little bit on the court, uh, you know, being physical on the court, getting into the fray. Uh, I guess how much did you kind of see that during the evaluation process? You know, the one thing we saw about him, we saw his growth in terms of that and, and the maturity just in the few months that we saw him at the Ignite program. Uh, I think he was really quiet his first several games, but then you see his personality. And I think a little bit of his leadership come out the further you got and the more comfortable he got with his group of players. Um, and I think the more comfortable he got with knowing that he belonged um, with that group of players and in the G League. Uh, we saw it a little bit in his workout here, tried to get physical, bang some guys in the shoulder. Uh, so he's got a quiet intensity and a quiet competitiveness about him that we like a lot. Um, he, is, he is humble, but he's going to come in there and work, and he's going to earn his spot. Um, and I think over time uh, he'll get a little bit more vocal. Willie will push him to be more vocal and be a leader on the court with the ball in his hands. Um, but he makes good decisions, um, and I think he wants to make everybody around him better. He wanted to make two visits, but we didn't need him to make two visits, so I'll put it that way. <laughs> was there any trade talk when you came up? Was there, talk, was there thoughts of going down? Is that a possibility? I think you always have to prepare for that just in case your guys aren't there. Um, we went in knowing there was a group of guys. We felt that at eight um, we'd get a guy that we liked. We knew we'd get a guy that we liked, but – you also have to be prepared to, you know, could you move two slots back, three slots back if those calls came? You know, what would be the asking price, and would we still get the guy from, you know, at the spot that we traded to? So um, I don't think it was ever serious. Uh, obviously, being in, in preparation, you have to have those hypothetical talks, but I don't think it ever was something that was a reality. Um, well, with the pick of Dyson, we're at 15 guaranteed contracts. Uh, I think we like the team as it stands, but I, I don't think we'll be calling people to try to make specific moves with our guys, but it, we have to be open to calls. And if there's any time that we feel that there's a chance to get better, we're going to listen. Uh, so I think that's going to be our approach over the next couple weeks, is there a chance to get better, um, 
I think obviously we all know what the most important thing is that we're going to focus on now going forward. I don't really want to talk about that right now because I want to focus on the draft. But, um, you know, there, there's some things that we're definitely going to talk about that are important. Um, but we like the roster as it sits right now. Yeah, it's, it's been good, you know. Um, I think it's difficult for him. I think if you ask him, it'd be difficult. You know, I've, I've been through two knee surgeries myself, and my, my surgeries in the ACL uh, are similar timelines or different type of um, recoveries and rehabs, but the timeline is the same, and it's, it's hard. It's hard being on the sideline, not playing the game that you love and having to work every day, and he's in there twice a day now uh, with our performance team. But... Um, He's working hard to get back, and it's, it's a long journey. But uh, he's had a great attitude, and, and we can't wait for him to get back. But we're glad he's here, and he's working, and we're seeing him every day. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks guys.